pretty. So we're live, including video? Yep, fantastic. <laughs> thank you, thank you to the team. And welcome, people, to the uh, River Horse newsletter. So it is the uh, 23rd of August, and uh, obviously, as usual, we'll be uh, just go quickly through the, through the newsletter and tell you all the exciting news and bits that are released now. And after that, we'll go quickly through the, um, or maybe not so quickly, through the tactics for this particular. I have two forces for Pacific Rim here ready for some analysis, some choices. Uh, but we'll do that uh, after, after going through the newsletter. So, uh, where do we begin? We begin indeed with uh, the tactic article for Pacific Rim Extinction that I have written. Uh, obviously, written by a genius who so is full of very important information and great, uh, and great, and there's a motorbike just nearby. Um, so there's a lot of cool advice that, uh, I mean, I think is cool. You, you judge, <laughs> you tell me if it's cool. But yeah, basically I went through the most important key points of tactics in, uh, in Pacific Rim when you play. Uh, so in the, in the newsletter you have a link to the article and uh, the article is on our website. But basically as a miniatures game there's emphasis on teamwork between the between the different uh, models in your army. It's very important to kind of concentrate fire, concentrate attacks on one enemy at a time, trying to outflank particularly getting in the rear arc because that's the way you, you kill big characters, that's the way you take out enemy models basically. Uh, so emphasis on teaming up, uh, on targeting the enemy leader, because that reduces the, the, the kind of the response, strategic response of the of the entire team, uh, prioritizing one target over another, and uh, deciding whether to go for the Jaegers or for the buildings if you're a kaiju, because that you know again that depends a lot on the on the scenario on the mission being played. Uh, and finally, the last bit uh, is about uh, mixing. Um, forces because obviously the the base game is kaijus versus jaegers but there's no reason whatsoever why you cannot pick a force which is mixed so we have a mixed force which jaegers and kaijus what if scenarios pick up and play games so uh, we'll go through that in, in more detail <coughs> later but i have two example forces here uh, and like as normal for newsletters if you if you have any questions please write them down in the in the box and uh, the team will will shout them shout them at me and uh, or them or answer them directly depending on what the question is and uh, yeah we can do that too so uh continue with the uh, with the newsletter after these first focus on the tactics for pacific rim there's a very useful piece of, uh, of information i mean very useful for people like me basically it's a it's a video that uh, we put together about assembling the uh the buildings which you find in the box uh, for normal expert level uh, kind of war gamers, modelers, it's so easy. You know, I've seen people just going, yeah, that's obvious. I am not very good at this kind of stuff. So I, yeah, I kind of went a bit like, where does this piece go? So we had this video for people like me that will, have, will need a little help to kind of put together the, the, the cardboard um, buildings that come with, uh, with the game. But the outcome is fairly, I mean, the, the, all the instructions are very simple, very quick, step by step, N not a difficult thing. But in case you need help, there's, there's a video for you. After that, we have uh, the creature feature. And this time we have the Kirin and the Nirik. So the, uh, these are creatures from the actual anime animation series of uh, <laughs> not the anime, sorry, I was still in Pacific Rim World. Uh, back to My Little Pony. So from the cartoon and uh, you you basically can use them as characters in the, in the game or as the playing characters as well which is quite quite interesting because they have this double nature of uh, Kirin gentle and then they can turn into the Rick very <laughs> when they get angry um, the episode that you that where they features is actually quite very good fun if you if you have seen it if not have a look it's really nice um, as usual uh, obviously if you want to create your own creatures your own your your uh, Characters or creatures or monsters or ponies uh, and submit them to us. We we can you know uh, turn them into official and put them into into the creature feature in in a few weeks. So we have some in approval, so thank you for sending those and uh, yeah, keep doing it. It's fun. Um, ooh, the next thing is a, a reveal of the three more of the cards for the Labyrinth card game, and uh, <laughs> the the Hanging Ludo is uh, is a very interesting card because. 
this is a reverse of a game, as usual, so the characters normally face up and down, so normally the one at the top is facing up, the one at the bottom is facing down, but in this case it's completely the other way around, because he's hanging upside down, so you have a reversal within the reversal, very <laughs> very intriguing, and I mean, the other card that stands out, I mean, I mean Jumongus looks great, but the, the helping hands, the way that we rendered that um, kind of the, the darkness of the, of, the, of the funnel that goes down to the oubliette and the, the cards and, the, and again the, the nice shape they do when they when they reverse is I mean lovely card well done Ralph well done Pete so Ralph Fosley and Pete Borlis the two people that you know Ralph did the illustration Pete Borlis did the layout and some of the graphics uh, having graphic effects and so yeah it's great work if I say so myself Speaking of cool artwork, uh, then we have uh, our comic, which, you know, I, 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 I suppose I'm, I'm, a, I'm a total geek, of course, I'm a professional geek, but I'm really proud and happy to see this comic de developing every every week and, uh, you know, featuring me, featuring people here from the team, including George. Uh, so uh, it's fun. It's really cute and... Um, I think they're very funny. You tell me if you think they're very funny. But uh, this one in particular is uh, its quite true in the sense that uh, um, I tend to be quite analytical when I play war games, uh, while other people, George or perhaps other people in the team, are a little, a little less <laughs> analytical and a bit more spontaneous and go, rah! <laughs> so I think this, uh, this, this kind of captures that. Then we have uh, a first unboxing of Pacific Rim by one of the backers, I believe, of the of the Kickstarter. Uh, people overwhelmingly seem to be absolutely chuffed, and they love the what they're getting from our Kickstarter, which is a great feeling. I mean, it just it's just nice to see that you made that and it, you know, it came to pass and it's going into the world, and people like it, which is great fun. So please. You know, play it and let me know about what you think about the tactics because obviously we're going to go into into that, you know, in a second. Um, and then the, of course, there's uh, the, the the closing part of the of the newsletter with the, all the pre-orders. You can pre-order the Hunger Games. You can pre-order pre-order. <laughs> you can pre-order August and Obliet for Tales of Equestria, our standees set. The fantastic book from uh, Jim Henson's Labyrinth, the adventure game, which is gorgeous. <laughs> the as gorgeous Labyrinth card game, so there's a lot of Labyrinth Bonanza coming up. And of course the Pacific Rim, all the different uh, starter set or all the different uh, expansion models. Right, I've done the newsletter bit, so I can close that. And we can probably move to the close camera now. And uh, so if I stay here, so uh, here, and I look at the monitor to check where my hands are. Yeah, okay, so here are two teams, this team, uh, consists of uh, it's called the Blades Brothers, and Jake and Elwood here are uh, are actually <laughs> are actually Gypsy Avenger and Obsidian Fury. Obviously, the theme of this army is swords with blades, rotating blades, chain swords, and so that's the the, the, the characteristic theme. And then you have, in a way, this is quality, quality versus quantity. The, the reason why I say quality is because Obsidian Fury is the most expensive kaiju and uh, I picked two, if in fact two of the ace pilots for, for Gypsy Avenger so I spent a lot of points as uh, if I remember correctly I don't remember so that's two four can you remind me? so is 16 points on his own isn't it? yeah 7 remind me of points <laughs> uh, for oh the Blade um, Brothers Sorry, because I, I closed the computer so I can <laughs> look at the, the points and I forgot. Uh, I don't have access to that. At the moment. Okay, it's fine. So this is uh, both teams. <laughs> both teams are twenty points, twenty points, and this is obviously twenty points, which only consists of two models. While these twenty points are three models. So obviously we have expensive stuff here for twenty points, and for the same twenty points you have cheaper models, but more of them. So is it three versus two, which is, illustrates the, both the variation in terms of, of points. But also the variation in terms of uh, the, the fact you can mix. So I have I've intentionally put a Jaeger and a Kaiju on this side, and a Jaeger and two Kaijus on this side. So, so what you have here, you have two pants that both cost quite a lot of points, Jaeger and a Kaiju. So quite a lot of um, 
of quality on this side, while we have quantity on this side with three cheaper models and more importantly the pilots that I chose are not ace pilots, they're not even normal normal rangers, they are actually cadet level pilots, so they're actually the cheapest, in fact they're free, so th these are the pilots you can use for, uh, for free. Why, instead of spending points, if you want to focus on a force which is made of more models, more Jaegers, without the uh, without expensive pilots. What's the drawback of using cheaper pilots? Well, these guys have fewer connections, possibility, so obviously they only have two potential connections, so their skill level may not get quite as high as a, as a, the connection of two very, very good uh, rangers or, or ace pilots. And more importantly, these guys only have one special ability when you activate the deep drift, while these guys have <laughs> four each, in fact. Well, solo pilot doesn't really count because it's always on. So uh, three each that you activate with uh, with deep drift. So you can do lots of funky stuff, it's a lot cheaper. But so again, that really is the difference between the two teams. Um, the thing that I wanted to go through with you guys and uh, actually choose it together really would be the um, so these are the points with the points you buy the models and the pilots and then you have upgrades for the uh, for the Jaegers and you have mutations for the Kaijus and these mutations come as uh, offensive or defensive so you, you pick one offensive and one defensive mutation for for each Kaiju and you pick one upgrade per Jaeger um, some of these are specific to models. I mean, some of the upgrades are specific to a model. Or some of them are generic. The ones that are generic can be swapped around between any model. So the more models you have in your collection, the more generic uh, mut uh, upgrades you will get, the more you can actually customize your uh, your Jaegers. Uh, and the same is true for the pilots. In every, in every expansion, there's more pilots. So you get to, again, swap pilots between Jaegers. So by changing the, the pilot, the, the special abilities, the connections, which give you uh, extra skill, and the and, and the upgrades, there's a lot of customization that you can do. Uh, with the um, with the Kajus, there's less customization because you don't have the you don't play on three things. So in, in the Jaegers, it's pilot, pilot, and um, an upgrade. For the Kajus, you have two. So you modify their uh, you, you give them a, an, an upgrade in their attack capability and one in their defense capability. So you, you have uh, two mutations to play with. But on the other end, all the Kajus mutations, with very few exceptions, I think he is the only exception, uh, all those mutations or most of those mutations are actually interchangeable. So actually, there's more cross swapping of things between the Kajus that are less specific to each individual Kajus. And of course, that's the the precursors trying to you know, tinker with their weapons and make them more or less resilient. I don't know if you remember the the EMP weapon, for example, in, uh, in the first Pacific Rim movie. So you know, is that they are trying to make Jaeger killing uh, kaijus? So, um, for example, in this case, so if I start with this team, uh, I put down the, the 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 upgrades and the mutation that belong to each model. But of course, I can swap around, assuming that I have all of these models. Uh, in my collection. Uh, so for example, Obsidian Fury. Uh, he comes with a Fury upgrade, which I think I really like that uh, that offensive upgrade, which means that if I roll two or more triggers when attacking, I gain one Rage. That's a very good ability because you don't have to do this instead of something else. You just keep doing the thing you do, which is attacking and killing and destroying stuff. And as you do, just have to remember, oh, I rolled two triggers, let's get some Rage, which then you can spend on uh, on more abilities, more devastating attacks. So it's, this one is very good because it feeds your rage while you attack. Uh, then I so that was the attack uh, the, the attack mutation. Now I have to go for a defense mutation. Here I have one that is specific to Obsidian Fury. Uh, while defending, if you roll one or more triggers and have face up action, gain two successes. Very powerful, but circumstance sometimes you can play, sometimes not because you need to have a face up card so let's see what other options do i have for a for a defensive one i have retribution too much again defending uh, you may make a melee attack that's cool so basically when you die you can or where you're when you you know you're defending yeah you, know, you can actually counter counter attack which is kind of nice and it's very parry and rip repost so that's interesting it isn't dead. If you're destroyed, you may play an action card. So that's the one where, when you did, when you die, then um, you can take somebody with you, which is cool. Armor plated scheme. If you roll one or more triggers when defending, gains plus one success. I suppose this is kind of nice in representing his um, 
is you know the fact that he's actually armored in the sense that he uh, is a kaiju inside but a jaeger on the outside so he's got plate armor plate i think seems appropriate armor plate skin so these are my choices so i get rage if i roll triggers when i attack and i get more successes so i'll get better defense when when i roll triggers when defending so that's my choice for him and while we, while we're on the cages let's do the cages so on this side i think hakuja and hakuja i have a very clear plan in mind there is a one of the upgrades in his uh, in his box is that uh, is the one called brutality and if you destroy a jaeger or a building you gain full rage the thing is one of his attacks is actually the uh, siege attack is actually specifically to destroy buildings you spend rage you make a lot of damage against buildings you destroy them very easily so if you have a mutation that if you destroy a Jaeger or a building you gain full rage that's kind of a i think is great so destroy building you spend rage get rage back and more rage than you spent so it's um i like because basically you, you stick doing what you're doing destroying buildings and you're regenerating your your rage so what's next i need to give him a defensive a defensive ability obviously i would be looking at uh, at the kaiju signature of uh, hakuja if i remember correctly he's already quite tough so i could probably try to make him even tougher hmm. let's see I, I gave the armor plated skin to to obsidian fury so let's say something else okay two more triggers while defending which time you get rage from the range i think i'll go for this one if you roll two or more triggers when defending and are damaged by the attack you may make a melee attack so basically i have uh, the ability of damaging you if you damage me so i should make it make them think twice <laughs> probably try to target me with uh, ranged attacks rather than in close combat which is nice put them off and finally the last kaiju here is shrythorn i could go for i mean the classic thing i do is to go for uh kaiju strength because that's a simple one just makes his attacks more powerful if you roll one or more triggers while attacking you gain plus one success so it's basically the same as armor plate the skin that's for attack that's for defense and now a defensive one oh i like this one definitely like this one so deafening roar i like the fact that when you play rage so effectively your your catch is going raw and is uh is doing this huge kind of godzilla like uh, scream as well as gaining rage which is the normal effect of the card you also in this case roll a combat die for enemies within um within you gain rage for an action if you roll a trigger you may force one jaeger within short range to return a face-up action to his so basically if you roar loud enough and you're lucky with the triggers then you can actually force uh, one of the enemies to lose a turn which is very powerful uh obviously you need to roll the dice and you're doing the trigger so it's not happening all the time but a good thing is that normally when you play the rage card you're just you're literally just uh, boosting your 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 rage while in this case instead you're boosting your rage and you're attacking an enemy so double effect so i think is a, is a very good mutation there you go so i've chosen the mutations now let's go for the uh for the upgrades uh in the case of gypsy avenger i'll check his specific mutations first because normally they're quite good Gypsy Avenger, if you roll three or more triggers when defending, does not suffer any damage. That's not likely, but very powerful if it happens. Resilience, if you roll one or more triggers while defending, you can take no more than one damage from his attack. That is very good. Twin Chainsaws, this will be very thematic with the theme that I have, which is Blade. So I'll think I. If you roll two or more triggers and attack while the chainsaw attack card, you must spend one charge to make another melee attack. Yes, well, I have to go for this. Possibly not in a tactical sense but just in a theme sense being as basically a gain a spe specialization in uh, in chain sword sounds the right thing to do so you will have the twin chain sword upgrade also the model is the uh, kickstarter specific uh, kickstarter uh, exclusive model which has the two chain swords so seems again seems appropriate um then for gypsy danger alloy armor so this is a defensive one similar, similar to the armor plated skin i think i like making him a bit tougher because he's a he's an old jaeger yeah i think yeah i'll go for this one so i shall put alloy armor on him to make him last a little longer 
So if you're all one or more triggers while defending, you gain a success. The same as armor plated skin, really. So basically, tougher armor. I increase the armor of them. I like simple mutations that don't have uh, the not in particular moments because just so you don't have to remember special things. You just you know it's always on effectively. Cool. So that is a example of how you pick uh, uh, your your skills and, and uh, sorry your upgrades and, um, and mutations. Again, if you have any questions about the process, do do shoot. Uh, and we'll answer them. And so you can see that there's a lot of customization and the more you have, the more models you have, the more you can actually boost them, cross-reference and cross move around all these abilities, which clearly, basically the more you have, the more powerful even the other ones will become. Not as like, like a ploy to try to make you buy more of these. No, 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 no we would never do that. Um, so what do you think? Do you think, I mean, obviously would, I, definitely hope there will be a conversation of uh, which mutations are best on which models because obviously they combine with their attacks and their the normal uh, ca action cards and hopefully if we've done our job right there will be no completely broken mutation or upgrade that people will just go ah oh, that's so much better than everything else but hopefully not right right team we've done a perfectly balanced game where everything is equally a good choice yes of course of course, of course. i just made it look nice <laughs> <laughs> so yeah if you find any killer combo uh, do let us know it'd be interesting and uh, if you find anything that's literally broken we'll put it in the FAQs and, and the right we, we'll talk about that next week uh, and uh, yeah so let us know how you're enjoying the game and uh, suggestions for other teams I mean this is a again it's very extreme 20 points versus 20 points I was thinking keeping 20 points is more or less as the pick up and play tournament whatever uh, level uh, and no 20 point when I say points obviously because you can you have a threat level you double it when you work out your points because that's what you normally do in the game while the Jaegers have a, a cost that doesn't double and the, you just add the pilots to it the total is what your force is worth 20 points versus 20 points two models three models there you go so that was it so unless there's any other questions I think I can uh, Bye, Duke. Goodbye, and uh, I'll see you next week.